My name is Anna Andrews. And I'm Mark Johnson. Please join us for the call to worship. Praise the Lord, because it's good to sing praise to our God. Because, because it, it is, is a pleasure, pleasure to, to make, make beautiful praise. praise. God heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. God, God counts the stars by number, giving each one a name. Sing to the Lord with thanks. Sing praises to our God. Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to St. John United Methodist Church, the 11.30 a.m. Contemporary Service. My name is Mark and I am joined by... Carrie. And as always, we're really grateful to be uh, your worship leaders. It feels like it's been a little bit since we've got to worship with you. It was a three Sunday in a row week last week where there's two Sundays that's there and then one, one combined Sunday. So it's good to be back. It's good to be back and worship with you guys this way. And we're really excited to just participate and join in worship, join the body and the fellowship of Christ today. And I love you guys. Let's get some worship on. One, two, one, two, three, four. Shine, Jesus, shine.
join us for the unison prayer of the day. Come, Come my, my light, and illumine my darkness. darkness. Come, Come, my life, and revive me from death. Come, my physician, and heal my wounds. Come, flame of divine love, and burn up the thorns of my sins, kindling my heart with the flame of thy love. Come, my king, sit upon the throne of my heart and reign there. For thou alone art my king and my lord. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to worship today at St. John. My name is Autumn and I serve as the pastor of student and family ministry. I invite you to fill out a connect card today by going to stjohnanchorage.org slash connect card or comment in the chat to let us know you're worshiping with us today. Without doing one of these two things, we don't know who's joining us and we want to know that you've chosen to worship with us today. As you fill out the Connect card or drop your name in the chat, let us remember the mission of St. John. The mission of St. John United Methodist Church is to grow disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world and to be a welcoming family, joyfully sharing God's light. I told you last week I couldn't wait to share just how many pantry packs you helped our youth put together. The final count is 558 packs, give or take 10. We decided we were better at assembling than we were at counting. Again, thank you so much for your support in helping us serve and provide meals for families in our community. We also completed four tie blankets for AK Child and Family, repackaged dry milk and rice, and prepared delivery bags for fish. All because of your support. Thank you so much. Last Sunday, the February Sunday School kits were put on the porch for pickup at your convenience. There are a few kits left if you have not gotten yours yet. St. John's Men's Sunday Group will be switching times to 1 p.m. on Sundays beginning February 21st for a special Lenten study on Reckless Love by Tom Berlin. Contact Clark or Pastor Andy for more details. This year for Ash Wednesday, there will be a drive-in worship service in the west parking lot of the church on February 17th at 6.30 p.m. So that we can make sure there's enough room for everyone please sign up ahead of time on our Eventbrite. You can find this link on our homepage. And I'm so excited to share that Hugh Miller has joined our staff as our new facility supervisor. We're so excited to have him join our staff team and use the special gifts he's been given to care and oversee our facility. Welcome, Hugh, to the team. And today's Communion Sunday. Have you prepared your communion elements yet? I invite you to go and grab them now to prepare for communion a little later in the service. Now let us continue in worship together.
I invite you into a time of prayer together. Go to menti.com and there you'll enter in the code 22 39 35 2. And together we can share our prayers with God and one another. Let us pray together. Good news that Shane's chemo is working. 
for answers to technical questions, for willingness to research until those answers are found, and for courage to step into new spaces. Continued prayers for the Moore family. Clarice started chemo treatments this week. for the COVID vaccine distribution. Prayers for the Reed family as Andrew seeks new employment. Kids back in school. Prayers for my Nana's knee replacement surgery tomorrow. Prayers for the COVID vaccine to be available to all to stop the spread. Prayers for the people of Burma, whose bravery and resilience is an inspiration to us all. Work challenges and meeting state budget and audit. Joy that Allison returned home from the hospital to heal. Moving decisions for Mark's parents. For the courage to sit with my ideas and perspectives that are uncomfortable. Prayers for jobs, for those who need one. Peace about life transitions. Praise for beautiful shimmering sunshine and for godly wisdom and a path forward for our teens and young adults as they navigate depression and anxiety in these trying times. Challenges and insurance for treatment. Kidney donor for niece. For the ability to still be able to worship together and apart. Continue prayers for Madison's cancer treatments. For kids and teachers safety back in school, access to the vaccines and separation from family members. For the Jones family helping their father, grandfather, father-in-law in getting a cancer diagnosis. Challenges in academics and college transitions. <laughs> Joyce, that Pastor Andy is one of our pastors. For Dan, who had to have surgery. For Barbie, who long longs to know how to support Dan well.
more collaborative work and wisdom for our national and state leaders. Let us pray. Almighty God, this beautiful creation you've made just doesn't stop moving. There is so much joy and concern in that observation, Lord. The turmoil, division, and tensions continue, but God, we look to you with hope for peace, for an end to war, for goodness to conquer evil, for the light to cast out the dark. God, so many live in tension. Tension of doing what has to be done to survive held against feeling or knowing what is right. God, help us to find support and courage and bravery, to see and do the right and good things, to reach out and stand up for those who are struggling to survive and ease that tension. Help those who are privileged to step into uncomfortable places and advocate for those with less privilege in our society so that we may truly be one. One people working together for this one earth, this one humanity created in the image of you, God. You've heard our prayers spoken, typed, and unspoken. Those that remain too hard, too delicate, or scary to share with others just yet. You've heard them all, Lord. Receive them into your care as we pray together in the way your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the, and the glory forever. Amen. My name is Josie Thuya, and I have the privilege of serving as the Director of Children's Ministry at St. John. Today, we are thinking about strength, both the strength that we get from God and the strength that God has. I want you to think about the strength that we see from Piggy and from Gerald in this book and how they are different, but they're both important. And then I'd like you to talk to your family about what strengths you have from God and how you can share that strength with people around you. I hope you enjoy reading this story as much as we do. Watch Me Throw the Ball by Mo Willems. La, 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 la. A ball. You found my ball. This is your ball? 
Yes. I threw it from way over there. You threw this ball from way over there. I am very good at throwing. Whoa. May I throw your ball? You want to throw my ball? Yes. Do you know the secret to throwing? Sure. Have fun. Fun? Throwing this ball is not easy. It takes skill. It takes practice. It takes skill and practice. I worked very hard to learn how to throw a ball. Very hard. Got it. May I? Right. Try now? Yes. Maybe one day you can throw like me, but... Stand back! Pig is throwing! Fling! Plop. Well, how about, about that? I threw the ball so far you can't even see it. Woo! Who rocks? The pig rocks. Who rocks? Who rocks? Call me Super Pig with my arm of power. Ha! Uh, Piggy? Need to. Throw a ball. Here's the pig to call. Piggy! You mean super pig? Right? 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 <laughs> super pig? I can see your ball back here. Do you know what this means? Yes. I threw the ball all the way around the world. The pig did it again. Super pig is really neat. Super pig can't be beat. Beat. Piggy, you did not throw the ball all around the world. The ball flew behind you and fell here. And that is not very far. Not very far at all. You are right, Gerald. I did not really throw the ball very far. But I still had fun. La 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 la. Fling! Woo! Yes! I rock! Dear God, thank you for giving us strength when we need it. Amen. Child come in, hallelujah.
The scripture reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom, then, will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives me power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall, they shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Starry, starry night. Paint your palette blue and gray. Look out on a summer's day. With eyes that know the darkness in my soul This is a Don McLean song called Vincent from the early 70s and it's what filled my mind when I was reading the verses just before today's reading in Isaiah. Verse 26 says, Look up at the sky and consider who created these. The one who brings out their attendants, one by one, summoning them each by name. Because of God's great strength and mighty power, not one is missing. Starry, starry night, flaming flowers that brightly blaze, swirling clouds in violet haze, reflect in Vincent's eyes of China blue. 
Vincent. Vincent van Gogh. And here's a copy of one of the paintings he refers to in the song, Starry Night. Now, how many of you know something about Vincent van Gogh? Feel free to post stuff in the chat. Yeah, well, that's the thing most people tend to think about, the, the ear thing. Van Gogh was a tortured soul. His life was plagued with anxiety and worry. In today's scripture reading, Isaiah is speaking to the exiled Israelites. And you've heard me say it a few times before as I've preached through Isaiah, but in the first 39 chapters, all we hear from the prophet is doom and gloom, devastation and destruction. The Assyrians and later the Babylonians had come in and defeated God's people. The temple was destroyed. The people were shipped out and deported from their own land. These people were full of anxiety and worry. And in chapter 40, Isaiah makes a sudden and sharp turn to the left. Gone are the words of affliction, and in their place are words of compassion and comfort. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says the Lord. That's how verse chapter 40 begins. And our reading today is a continuation of that call for comfort. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Hasn't it been told since the very beginning of the earth, God is near? And those who cause anxiety and worry, those in this world who oppress others and seem powerful, they're not. They are scarcely planted, scarcely sown, scarcely rooted, Isaiah declares. God's breath will one day blow upon them, and they will dry up and be carried away by the wind like straw. God asks, who is like me? And here Isaiah echoes Psalm 8. Look at the sun and the moon and the stars, the wonders of the heavens that I have created. Creation so beautiful and magnificent, it leaves us it leaves us wondering how God can even consider us, let alone love us so deeply. You see, Isaiah and the psalm writer both acknowledge how incredibly profound God's creative abilities are. You know, we are made in God's image. And if God is a creator, then we too are called to create music painting, cooking, sewing, woodworking. These are all creative gifts God has given us to use to live fully into this amazing world God has created. So what are the ways that you like to create? What do you like to do to be creative? I invite you to go ahead and share those in the chat with others. Because these are amazing Gifts. God has given us not only to express ourselves, but there are also ways that God meets us and conveys God's grace to us and through us to be a blessing to others. I really believe it is no accident that Isaiah inserts this piece of scripture about God's creative nature right in the middle of this text to not worry or not be anxious. And we can know it's right in the middle because there are these nifty little literary devices that we call bookends. Verse 21 starts with, do you not know? Have you not heard? And after the description of God's creation, we read again in verse 28, do you not know? Have you not heard? It's repeated. Any time we see something repeated in such close proximity in scripture, it should be this big red flag saying, hey, this is important, pay attention here. And remember, the context for the audience of today's passage is fear, anxiety, worry about life. And so I want to invite you to think quietly for a moment. What is the source of your anxiety right now in life? What is it that's keeping you up at night 
wringing your hands and worrying your heart. Now I invite you to hear Isaiah's good news spoken directly to you. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. God never grows weary. God never grows tired. God's understanding is beyond compare. God will lift you up on eagle's wings. God will give you strength for those who wait for God. Music has a way of helping us to memorize, to tuck scripture away into our hearts. And and I think today's scripture is one of those that's worthy of memorizing or reciting or reminding ourselves of on a regular basis. So I want to teach you a song by Tom Lane, a song that I learned from United Methodist musician Ed Kilburn, and it's a song I've taught to some of you before. It's called On Eagle's Wing. And I invite you to sing along with me. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord. grows weary. He never grows tired. His understanding is beyond compare. Let's do that again. He never grows weary. He never grows tired. His understanding Friends, I want to encourage you to try a different approach to facing the anxiety and worry you may be experiencing in life. Be creative. Don't sit still worrying your life away, letting your troubles wrap you up tighter than a clock spring. Don't run yourself ragged trying to fix everything yourself, but rather stop. Breathe. Wait. Invite God in. Listen 
for God speaking. Engage in creating something, and you just might be surprised at how God shows up and meets you in the midst of that creative space. Because when we're creating art, music, poetry, food, we are living into the creative image in which we were made. That painting, Starry Night, did you know that Van Gogh painted that and almost all of his other famous and brightly colored works in the last couple years of his life, in the height of his anxiety? God met him in those dark places and gave him an incredible gift, a gift to create. And God has given you this same gift. So that's what I want to encourage you with this week. Maybe there's some creative outlet you used to make time for. Perhaps your soul has been longing for time spent with God through the creative Holy Spirit. When you feel like you're coming to the end of your rope, stop. Make time to be creative, to get messy with painting or bread dough. Be loud and annoying with an instrument, write quite literally until your heart is content. Build or construct creatively and perhaps you might just find God speaking to you in that space, giving you strength and endurance, reinvigorating your spirit and giving you wings like eagles, helping you to grow and learn through this difficult time God will lift you up on eagle's wings. God will give you strength. God will lift you up on eagle's wings. Those who wait for him. Those who wait for him. Those who wait for him. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, You are forgiven. Now you all get to say it back to me, and I'm sure I'll hear it across the many miles that separate us. Glory to God. Amen. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. We do this through giving financially and giving our lives over to service in the name of God. You can make a financial gift today by going to stjohnanchorage.org slash give or mailing a check to 1801 O'Malley Road, Anchorage, Alaska, 99507. I invite you to take a moment to prepare your elements for communion today. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks in praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, and by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. I invite you to lift the bread with me. He took the bread. He gave thanks to you, Lord. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. I invite you to raise yours as well. He took the cup, gave thanks to you, Lord, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered and on these gifts of bread and wine in each of our homes. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make each one of us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet together. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break across many miles together is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Friends, receive this gift of grace, the body and the blood of Christ given for you. Amen.
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Thank you guys for worshiping with us today. Thank you for participating uh, in the service, whether you were in the chat, whether you are singing these songs, whether you are listening to Pastor Andy, or whether you're just taking it all in and being the body with us. Thank you for being in worship today. We have one song left. Uh, It's a song that we had a lot of fun working up. Also, it was a lot of work working up. We wanted to pick a song that we would really kind of go all out on. And this is that song. It uh, really ended up at a special place that even though we had a vision for it, it felt like God took it 
um, just another step further to where we could have ever hoped it would end up. We hope it can can touch you guys, that uh, can speak to you guys, and that you would feel feel some of uh, just God's spirit in the song, because that's really kind of how it how it felt like it ended up. We were definitely able to to worship through doing the song, and we hope that you can work with, worship with us through doing the song. Absolutely. Yeah, so the song is Revelation song. We hope that this last song and really this whole service can be part of filling you up so that you guys can in turn pour out uh, into the world. We love you guys. We miss you guys. Let's sing some Revelation song.
Bohemian wax wings. We're blessed to have them fill our skies and backyards this time of year. Have you been outside and seen these little guys? Haven't you heard? God continues to reveal God's self to us through creation and creating. May God's creative spirit be yours this week as you listen for God speaking to you. And may the peace that passes all understanding be yours. Go in that peace to love and serve the Lord your God. Go in that peace to love and serve your neighbor.